Hi everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip. I'm a developer advocate at Stripe, and we're here at the Caribbean Developer Conference. We're talking to tons of different companies and different, com um, different folks, just trying to learn about what they're doing down here while we're at the conference. And so I have my friend here, Alex. And so Alex, why don't you introduce yourself to folks, yeah. tell them who you are and a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sounds good. So Alex Mailbranch, mm -hmm. uh, I work for GitHub right now as okay. the global engagement lead for the GitHub for Startups program. So okay. we're helping founders and startups across the world uh, engage in what they're doing from a technological standpoint and, and grow uh, grow their company leverage in GitHub. So what made you want to work with founders? Is that is there yeah. something that's yeah. a familiar space for you? Or yeah, like? so actually I, I just, well, before I joined GitHub, I was a founder myself. Okay. Yeah, so I, I started a tech company and did that for a few years and just really enjoyed uh, the strategy of it, the grind of it, yeah. uh, you know, just getting to innovate and meet different people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I traveled a whole bunch doing uh, pitch decks and things like that and so, um, being an underrepresented founder myself, you know, going through that process, I realized, okay, there's a lot that, that we could use as underrepresented founders and founders in general, and I want to be a part of that growth um, from a larger scale. So sure. I think it was perfect for me as I was transitioning out of being a full-time founder, how can I continue to leverage working with founders and helping, and, and GitHub had a great opportunity for me. What are some of the things you wish you knew going into like starting yeah. your company? that no one told you before? Like, What are like the, the founder sure. tips and tricks that you think folks need to know about? Um, I think something that people say a lot, but it's kind of one of those things where like you don't know until you experience until you it, it yourself. Yeah. yeah, It's building that community around you when you're starting. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people, um, at least from the outside, they start with like your co-founders, right? That's sure. your community, how you're gonna build. But it's a lot more than that, right? I had like investors, um, that gave you know a ten thousand dollar check, but they were really there as mentors for me to help yeah. kind of go through the ins and outs of how to pitch and what kind of investors are good investors. And um, so building that sort of community, building a founder community, like you know we're going through very unique, stressful situations. Yeah. Other founders kind of know what that's like. So yeah. having someone to call and be like, hey, like I'm I'm at a brain you know block right now. Like mm -hmm. how'd you get through this? Or Maybe you just want to talk about something else. So I think building that community as a as a founder is really really important. Yeah. I think that's also a way that um, I'm I'm trying to involve GitHub and trying to leverage that to help build an ecosystem of of other founders. Yeah, because well, when I think about it, like you can have whatever product that you're building, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever product you're building, whatever service you're creating, and it could be like the best product in the world. But without that network and that community, sure. then it kind of puts you at a disadvantage, right? Because now. You know, how do you get your message out there? Like, exactly. How do people know about what you're doing? Mm -hmm. How do you get the support that you need? Yes. The mentorship you need, the funding you need? Exactly, right? like, yes. How do I reach out into that larger founder community mm -hmm. to really, you know, get to like that next level of, yeah. of success and engagement yeah. that I need outside of like the quality of my actual product, right? And to your point, you, you started with, uh, oh man, I'm sorry, I just lost it. Uh, you started with, oh, you started with having different industries and like mm -hmm. different products that you're building. And even though you, I might be working on kind of a medical device startup, you might yeah. be working on a retail startup, obviously they're very different, but there's cores, there's a core to building a startup that is the same. Sure. And so having those different people in different industries, they're st struggling with very similar problems in the building of your startup, but they can come from a different perspective because their industry might work differently. Yeah. So another good reason why it's, uh, it's really important to have that different, yeah. uh, that ecosystem for you. Mm -hmm. So you, there's something about you. I'm trying to put my finger on it. Where are you from? Like, like what is your background like? Like, yeah. what is your, cause, so, cause I'm, I'm asking too, because I always find like, for different folks in different cultures, like there's yeah. always an energy sure. behind of it. Like there's a motivation, there's something I have to prove, yeah. or there's something that's just kind of in my family DNA, yeah, and this yeah. is just how we are. So I'd love to know a little bit about your background and like how did you get to this place? Yeah, so my family is from Haiti. Okay. Yeah, so my, my mom immigrated from Haiti to New York when she was 17. Okay. And then um, you know, I'm, I'm one of four kids and my mom's a single mom and th that's how I grew up for the most part. So when, sure. we, when she came to America, she settled in a couple different places. Eventually, I was—I yeah. grew up in Chicago. Okay. And so, just kind of, kind of seeing her go through. You know, she worked two, three jobs when I was in middle school and high school. Just kind of seeing what that was like for her. She yeah. would sleep in her car in between shifts, and and so just kind of seeing what that yeah. level of work ethic looks like. Of course, I wanted to be able to take that and put it into something that was going to be, you know, secure for my family, right? Like, sure. To see my mom worth two and three jobs is like something I don't want to see ever again, I and I definitely it. don't want to experience. I get it. I get but it. the work, the work ethic that she had is 
you know, second to none. So yeah. I just, I think just seeing that, you know, I started working when I was 14 and working a couple jobs in high school as well. And it's just one of those things I, I always want to continue to grow and build and do. And I think it just kind of aligns with what a founder needs to be able to do in order to be yeah. successful, at least somewhat, right? Yeah, I, I always find like, like it takes a certain type of person to be like, I'm going to do this myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's folks that are like, you know what? I'm comfortable working for a company and having them deal with everything. Yeah, yeah. But then there's an, there's something else inside of a person that drives them to be like, hey, I want to put on the entrepreneurial hat. Like, I want to take on the responsibility. Yeah. Because again, it's more than just building the products, but it's also taking care of your employees. Mm -hmm. It's also, again, making sure that we have enough, you know, payroll to go around. Yeah, and yeah. tons of other things that kind of like go into that. Mm -hmm. And so now, sure, you might be a great engineer or, you know, a great artist or whatever the case is. But then now, being a founder is so much more than yeah, that, right? Yeah, a lot of it's responsibility. Plus the responsibility, sure. right? So I can completely understand where like, hey, given your backgrounds, why you could be like, you know what? Like, I'm willing to put in the work yeah. because I've seen what it's like when you don't really have control. Mm -hmm. And I find like for founders, they're like, you know what? I get it, I wanna have control over my space and what yeah. I do, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and the interesting thing that aligns with that is I started my company when I was on paternity leave Did you? with my second daughter. Wow. So I, I was one of those times where, you know, I was on paternity leave from my tech company I was working at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was pulling the midnight duty or whatever else to help um, with feeding and that sort of thing. And it was in those moments where I was like, you know what? Like, I'm looking at, I have one already. She's two yep. at the time. Have this new one. I'm like, Th this, I need to make, I, I need to figure this out. Yeah, I, I need to, I need to do something, right? Because yep. now I'm, I'm looking at, our, I am living that thing I was looking at as being the parent now. Like I'm looking at my daughter, I'm like, all right, like this is my time mm -hmm. to see what I can do to make that difference that I'd always said, hey, I want to do that. And so that's actually when it started. And um, so yeah, it makes complete sense as far as like, that was the time I was like, all right, it's, it's time for me to go out, take some control, see what I can do, right? And, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't go well, right, it's huge learnings, right? Yeah. Huge learnings from just, starting and even failing a startup. Like sure. so many things that you can take on to your next roles, your next companies, and maybe even try again. Most entrepreneurs are successful on their second, third, fourth attempt, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. and that's why, because the, the experience is so valuable. I'll tell you, man. You know, I can see why this is such a perfect role for you at GitHub for Startups. Yeah. Because again, because of your background, because of your history as being a founder, you know, if, if I was a founder, mm -hmm. right? I want to start Cecil's new company like today. Right? All right. And I wanted to join GitHub for Startups. Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And then what am I gonna get out of being a part of this program? Yeah, great question. So githubforstartups.com, mm -hmm. um, you apply. So we've got, we've got an offering for companies that come through a partner of ours. Okay. So like a VC partner, an accelerator, um, things of that nature. And then we have another offering for people that don't come through that. So we okay. wanna make sure it's inclusive. And what you get is a free seats, a number of free seats for GitHub Enterprise. Okay. Um, and the, the difference in between the offerings is basically how long you get it mm -hmm. and some of the extra kind of uh, product release features. And so yeah. you'll go on and apply. Uh, what I usually tell people, even if they're not currently like a startup with a partner of ours, is say, hey, if you're being funded by someone, even a singular investor, have them fill out our, our partner application. Mm -hmm. Once they do that, you'll go through, they'll go through an onboarding very quick. Yeah. And then now you'll go through as a partner. And the reason why is, with as a partner signed startup, yes, you'll get the free seat. So it's 20 free GitHub seats for enterprise, GitHub Enterprise for a year and then 50% in the next year. Mm -hmm. um, but as a partner of ours, you'll also get possible access to like early product releases. So oh, okay. um, we, we have a, a strong partnership with Y Combinator. And so some of the companies that were in Y Combinator got early access to Copilot um, and Code Spaces, which is some of our um, hot new services that yeah, have yeah, just yeah. come out. And so you'll be able to get some early access to that, but also um, events that we throw for our com our founding or uh, the founders in our company. So whether they be funding events, um, whether it be kind of uh, as a building that founder ecosystem, so happy mm -hmm. hours and things of that nature. We do things all throughout the year, mm -hmm. um, and so you'll get that kind of extra support from from us as well. And then we do educational stuff throughout the year. So okay. you now. It could be things that are strictly for GitHub. So, you know, how to build X, Y, and Z on GitHub, how to do custom actions on GitHub, uh, things of that nature. Or it could just be, hey, we brought in these people from Andreessen to talk about how to raise, right? Well, like, what are the things that they're looking for? Um, what's a good pitch deck, right? So, again, we're, just, we're trying to build 
in addition to the free credits that we can give, build yeah. using the ecosystem that we have as GitHub yeah. to help these companies leverage those. So in addition to like those benefits, which sound amazing, right? Because yeah. I know like code spaces and, and actions and all that type of stuff, is, it sounds like it's like some of the most cutting edge things that are yeah. happening right now. But in addition to that, um, do I get any type of mentorship or? Yeah, good question. So the, the, it's a brand new program. We actually just launched it in September. Oh, so this is fresh. Yeah, very fresh. Like two months ago, September. Exactly, like brand yes. New. Brand, brand new. So there, okay. was, there was like an incubation period when I came on. So I just started GitHub about six months ago and they brought us on, say, hey, like we're coming up with this program. Like let's have a, like an incubation period and then we'll launch it, right? And yeah. so some of the things that we're doing today are not going to be the things that we do six months from now. Sure. And so I, I say that to say like some of the things that we're kind of talking through around like mentorships for engineering or like technical co-founders, because of course that's that's the root of GitHub, right, is developers. So yeah. building an ecosystem uh, or, or extra features or community around engineers mm -hmm. um, and developers in that way. Uh, mentorship with some of our like customer advisory board for actual GitHub. So mm -hmm. we're doing, we've got our, our yearly conference universe next week. Mm -hmm. And some of our customer, customer advisory board members from, you know, the American Airlines and Stripe and some of the biggest companies in the world, right? We have executives that are set, set on the GitHub board. Uh, we're working on possibly doing mentorship with some founders and our cab That'd members. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, so a lot of really great opportunities that we're looking to get kind of uh, into in 2023. And so at the moment, right, is we're building that ecosystem and helping leverage, uh, you know, the relationships and the te top technology we have. Um, but next year, we're hoping to launch a lot more things that are going to uh, bring that to the next level. Okay, so then you so you told me what I need to do to mm -hmm. register as a company, as a yeah. new founder. Are there any particular requirements? Like, do I have to be a, in a particular region? Yeah, yeah. Is it for so English speaking, Spanish speaking folks. Like, so we're like global. Part of yeah, global program. Uh, the only thing, the only requirement is that you're new to GitHub Enterprise, which most, if not all, startups are. Yeah. Uh, because of cost, right? And then they're before, or excuse me. They have not gotten their Series A round of funding. Okay. Yeah. So as long as you've you less than your Series A round of funding, mm -hmm. um, you're you're welcome to join in and, and get that free information or excuse me that free technology and 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 be a part of the program. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so so we're here at the Caribbean Developers Conference. Yes. Like, what are some of the things that you're hoping to get from you know GitHub for Startups being here? For me, number one, especially as someone that's from this region, um, there's a lot of talent here. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that talent has the voice that it really needs. Sure. Um, I think people think of like offshore talent. Oh, you know, Fiverr, Upwork. I can have them do one or two things and move on. There's a lot of innovators here, mm -hmm. right? And so what I hope to get out of this is meet some of those innovators, um, whether they're starting their own companies now mm -hmm. or they just have that kind of, uh, you know, thought processing and they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Yeah. I want to start to give those people an opportunity to um, meet the right people, right? Sure. Whether it be from a funding perspective, they already have a company, or yeah. just uh, from a mentorship or person-to-person -person perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping to, to start those relationships and start to leverage those. I'm also hoping to learn from the people around me, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm from Haiti, but I'm, I've lived in America my whole life. Yeah. So there are a lot of perspectives that the, this culture, this region, um, that are in the same industry as me in yeah. tech and in development, right? They've got a different view of how they use GitHub or how they use different tools. Uh, what they're using it for. Um, and so I, I hope to learn that, right? So just kind of soak that in as I'm here and, and yeah. love the energy from the people in the area, right? And so um, how can you, how can I be in this space and, and continue to take their unique perspective of how they use technology and, mm -hmm. and bring that back to how we, how we use technology? Yeah, and I think that's a great point because I feel like for a lot of folks that are from, from the Caribbean and, and just from developing economies in general, yeah. you know, a lot of folks, that have the privilege to leave, like, you know, we leave, we go to college, we, you know, become educated, yep. but then now it's like, oh, wow, well, if I go home, what am I gonna do, mm -hmm. right? Like, you might have gone and learned something that they might not be an industry for you in your particular country, sure. right? So now, you know what, you don't need to come home now, but then now that you've gained this, this knowledge and this experience, still is be great for people to come home. Absolutely. And just share that information with folks, mm -hmm. let them know, hey, well, this is possible and this is what you could do. Absolutely. Because I think a big part of it is just perspective. Mm -hmm. Right, I think about when I first started and I thought, hey, I want to be a computer person. But computer people in my country, in Antigua, well, they plugged in printers and, yeah, yeah. you know, move boxes around. I thought that's what computer people did. Yep. Until I left and I got perspective. And I'm like, oh, you know what? 
I could be a software developer, I could be a designer, yeah. there's program managers, I could be a director of a company, yep. I could go work for any company I want, and I could work from home. Absolutely. I didn't have perspective, yep. you know what I mean? So again, I think it's great for us to come back and give perspective and share knowledge with people, with mm -hmm. kids, with founders, with yep. all these different folks, just so they can know what's possible. In my opinion, that's actually like the most important thing. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, when I started the founder process and people would ask me, did you become a founder to like be, you know, the next Jeff Bezos or sure. whatever? And yeah. it, m money has never really been a motivating factor for me mm -hmm. other than to secure like, you know, happiness for my family. Sure. But you can, you can do that with a relatively you know, low number. You don't need to be Jeff Bezos. Yeah. But for me, it was like, I can get to a point where I have the resources and uh, the gravity to go back to Haiti, to go to these places and say, hey, like, this is, this is real. Like we can do this. Like yeah. this is, this is a platform that I can. I, you know, I'm blessed to be able to come to a place like this, mm -hmm. speak on stage, yeah. and be able to say to people that are in my region, like, hey, like, yeah. I am, I am, I was here. Like I, I didn't really have the same perspective, and now I get to talk on stage and spread that knowledge, and hopefully, kind of build those relationships and come back and and grow. And so, as I hopefully become more successful in my career and get that uh, gravity to come back and put that back into Haiti and, yeah. and other countries and, and places that need it. That's, that's what's most exciting for me. Awesome, man. Well, hey, Alex, I really appreciate you coming man. over and talking to us. No, it was awesome. Thank and, you for having me. And thank all of you for watching. Again, so we're here at the Caribbean Developer Conference talking to different founders. And we just spoke to Alex from GitHub for Startups. Make sure you head over to GitHubforStartups.com and register your company and see what all they have to offer.